This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! <laughs> now, now you do. The lights at home were dazzlingly bright. Suddenly, they reminded me of how hungry I was. I checked the clock and saw that it was almost seven. I thought for sure it was at least two or three in the morning already. It's only seven at night?! I was surprised at how messed up my biological clock had gotten just from this one night. There was a warm light coming from the curtains in the living room window. The worlds between here and what was beyond, the, beyond those curtains were so different. If only that man hadn't shown up, I would have been in that light. I'd have been excited from the festival, and I'd be talking to my parents about how much fun I had with all my friends. And then, even though they made a hot meal for me, I would have eaten my way too much at the stalls, barely eaten any of it, and gone back to my room. No doubt I'd crawl into my futon and easily let myself fall asleep. But right now, I was completely different. There wasn't a single ember of warmth from those weak streetlights. Right now, I was unconnected to any time spent with my family, and there was neither warm food nor the time to allow myself to sleep. My body exposed to the cold rain. I knew that I simply had to spur myself on to accomplish what I must. I realized how timid, how cowardly I was becoming. For what purpose did I need to kill someone so badly that it was worth feeling this terrible? I'd lost sight of that purpose. I selected the fastest, most fundamental way of saving Satoko, and executed it without hesitation. That man was dead. He was gone. He would never, ever hurt Satoko again. We all fought frantically for days on end about Satoko's problem, and finally, with no options, we gave up. And I had solved it in one night. By myself, without anyone's help. How is it so dark at 6 a.m. in the summer? I think he's saying... No, it's 6 p.m. Or it's 7 p.m., not 7 a.m. But that's a good question. I don't know how it's that pitch black in the summertime. It definitely should still be light out. <laughs> this Like, this is close to the summer solstice, I think. Isn't this, like, June? <sighs> I'm pretty sure this is June. <laughs> right about now, Satoko would be making dinner for her uncle, despite not knowing when he'd return and she might be spending the night trembling in fear of whether he'd yell at her for how it tasted. But her uncle wouldn't come home. She wouldn't have to fear his wrath, nor let her let him make her feel her sad. <laughs> I see. I did it. I successfully saved Satoko. All I'd been thinking about for a long time was killing that man, and I'd forgotten the feeling that it was actually all to save her. Suck. <laughs> I did something good. That's right. I did something good, didn't I? I felt hot tears coming from my eyes. And that's when I first realized that the exhaustion I'd actually been feeling was guilt. The blade of guilt. For a while now. I had just been scraping away with its tip. Hurting my heart. It felt hurt so bad I couldn't stand it. It was throbbing painfully. Exactly! It is. There are much deeper issues here. It's gonna help, but... It's not like, I saved her! She's completely normal now, and we'll have no PTSD from this. Yeah, yeah, it's 7pm. He didn't stay up all night. No, people are, people are just coming back for the festival. Oh, I cried tears of joy at saving Satoko. <laughs> this is the this is the Higarashi equivalent of we did it, Patrick. We saved the city. <laughs> I didn't know why really anymore. I just cried. My tears fell and fell. As I stood there for a while, coming to terms with those warm tears, my heart was comforted a little. All right, Keiji Maibara, that's enough. There's nothing to regret or feel ashamed about. Both my body and mind were thoroughly exhausted, and that was a fact. It was only natural I couldn't feel anything. Even tomorrow, and the day after that, I might not be able to feel anything for a while. I just realized... Has the only sprite we have seen this entire stream been the one Satoko sprite when, like, we pictured her in our house, like, having dinner? I think so! I don't... Because when we were talking with Mio, and that was just on the phone, we didn't get her sprites. Whew. But there was one thing that was true. There was the indisputable fact that I had saved Satoko. You, you're throwing the word saved around a lot. One day, we would surely be rewarded. One day, I would be proud of how distress, distressing an enterprise I had undertaken to get Satoko's smile back. And so that I couldn't wait for the day, 
I had to put the finishing touches on this night. As soon as the statute of limitations for this uh, <laughs> goes away, he's going to be like, kids, did I ever tell you the story about how I killed Satoko's uncle? They're like, who the heck is Satoko? Also, you're a murderer? He's like, well, uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, that's right. There was also the flashback with Ren and me. Okay, I forgot about that. But it's been like three sprites. So I could wait for the day. I had to put the finishing touches on this night. If I left it undone, everything I'd accomplished today would be for naught. I looked back up. Up at the sky. Which didn't look like it would stop raining anytime soon. Then, I rubbed my eyes and summoned forth energy from my core again. How long did I plan on spacing out? This isn't the time for daydreaming. Someone could find that corpse this very moment. That pessimistic thought was the proof that very natural emotion of fear had returned to me. As I allowed my fear to spur me onwards, I went to look for the other shovel and the lantern inside the storage room. It was fortunate. I remembered what it looked like around the street light where the body was near. With how dark it was, it was quite possible I wouldn't have been able to look for it either. I didn't realize that when I left the place, so the idea of memorizing the spot hadn't even crossed my mind. And that's why I had to call it fortunate that I managed to get back to the body like this. The corpse was now located in a big muddy puddle. Half the thing had already sunk into the swamp-like pool of water. I only realized afterward, but there was an unused irrigation channel right nearby clogged with fallen leaves and dirt, and there was rainwater flowing in from there. My shoes had been awash with water for a long time now, so without any hesitation I stepped into the puddle. Luckily, the whole muddy stream washed it all away. I couldn't leave any slight traces, like blood stains. Well, he's very lucky it started raining, then. The rain was like a blessing from heaven. I checked around me, paying very close attention, then turned off the lantern. It became pitch black, but my eyes got used to the darkness in a few moments, and once I managed to reach the street light on the other side, I was able to make out even faint light. <laughs> I stuck the shovel into the puddle right next to the corpse. <laughs> You slept three hours inside of two. You did, you missed the first hour. Nah, that's fine. Also, you, I hope you get more sleep than that. <laughs> the ground was even looser, so the shovels tip easily slid inside. I had to hurry and dig. If I took too much time, I might lose my energy and strength again. It almost felt like digging a hole in the sand at the beach. It was easy to dig, but no matter what, the muddy water kept flowing in, covering the hole. The digging wasn't going as well as I had hoped. I dug and dug, and the water would go in, so I couldn't get a sense of how deep it was. The only way for me to measure it was to bury my own foot in the mud. I'm digging just fine. It's alright. Don't be disheartened. We dig, 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 dig to bury a corpse right now. Occasionally, a car would come by on the road, and I'd hurry to hide myself in the trees. Everyone was only passing through. They wouldn't have their eyes peeled in this kind of darkness. I understood it logically, but I couldn't help but hide. Do you still have the lantern lit? That might draw attention. What I was really scared of wasn't quite that one of those cars would coincidentally happen to witness me here. It was that the distance I could spot cars from was getting gradually shorter. At first, I noticed the splashing sounds from really far away as cars drove through them. I started noticing them less and less, and with that car that just passed by, I didn't notice it until its headlights were upon me. I felt my sense growing duller by the sense or by the second. If someone were to take a peek in secret as I was burying the body at the worst possible time, maybe I wouldn't even notice. The moment I thought that, I took a good look all around me. I roused all my half-asleep senses and searched for signs of presence nearby. What if I found out someone was spying on me from the trees? A carnivorous feeling snarled at me, glaring. If there was, then I would dig another hole. I'd come this far already. In order to achieve perfection, I didn't care how much more I had to pay. See, he's already thinking like a sociopath. I didn't know what kind of a face I was making at the time, but it was definitely a fervently glaring one. <laughs> My five senses reached the conclusion that nobody was present. I didn't breathe a sigh of relief. How long had I been digging this mud out of here? It was deep enough for me to go for it to go up to my knees. Maybe this was enough. Maybe I'd throw the corpse in as a test. <laughs> I swallowed, getting my breathing under control. Despite how much I'd beaten him, I was afraid of touching the corpse. So instead, I dragged it by its feet to the hole. It took more than just a waddle and a tug to do it. But of course it did, considering the man's weight was easily 80 kilograms. I rallied all my strength and dragged him. At this point, my groundless fears that he might suddenly start moving again had vanished from long ago. His body fit perfectly into the muddy hole. It was more than deep enough. 
All right, let's bury him. Quickly, quickly, quickly. If I did a perfect job of burying it here, everything would be over. I would hide it in the hole, and none of this would have ever happened. You're still going to have to deal with the fact that your friends are going to think it's really suspicious that you weren't at the festival. You were like the only... You and your parents are like the only people not at the festival, along with the uncle. And the uncle disappears. I wonder who the main suspects are going to be. When I realized I had only a little farther to go to finish everything, I was racked with pointless anxiety. Like I was in a race against time. Maybe we can pin the crime on Shion. That would be alright. I was, it was like I was absorbed in a delusion that if I didn't bury the body quickly, it might come back to life. In any case, in a great rush, I poured mud and dirt into the hole. If it didn't work efficiently, someone might find me here. Until now, I figured if I saw someone, I'd just kill them, but not anymore. I was just arrested with such absolute fear that if someone saw me, it would be all over. As I finished the work off, it was a total mess. Splish, splash, squish, squash. I drew the surface of the shovel across the ground, trying to make it flat. I was completely covered in mud at that point. The rain washed the mud off of my body, but not off of my now blackened clothing. My body and mind were caked with panic, with fear, with rain and sweat and mud. <laughs> my shoulders heaving, I threw the shovel down and sat in the mud. I was so exhausted that I wanted to just lie down right there and sleep. It was over. This time, for real, it was over. The man was now in the bottom of the wet dirt. Right this moment, there were traces that this place had been dug up, but the rain and the flowing muddy water would completely cover it all within moments. Yes, it was over. <laughs> yes, scream that for people to hear. And then I fell over backwards, face up in the mud. Raindrops pelted on my face without mercy, but I didn't care. After staying out there for a while, resting my mind, I got up again. It was over. So let's go home. You already buried the whole thing. So now it's just like it never happened. There's still the other pit you gotta fill in. And you also still have to find the shovel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he is a kid, I admit it. It never happened. So there's no reason for me to stay out here and get rained on. I wobbled to my feet. I wouldn't use that shovel anymore. I considered disassembling it, but I didn't have the strength in my absolute exhaustion. I didn't really need to take it apart anyway. Dragging the shovel behind me, I headed towards the light. I stood up my bike. It had been lying on the grass by the road. I didn't know how I was going to get the still-assembled shovel into the front basket. I put the shovel down on the back of my shirt like I'd done with a baseball bat. Unlike the bat, the corner of it was on my back, making it very painful. Plus, if I relaxed my posture even a little, it would fall out behind me. I ended up having to carry the shovel in my left hand and ride my bike using only my right hand. Not only was I in a state of total exhaustion, this was a downpour. One hand on the handlebars, I was swaying to and fro like a drunk. But I didn't care. Even swaying like this, I got a little closer to home every time I pedaled. He's, he's setting himself up like a bastard vibe, but any intelligent human adult, yeah, exactly, exactly. Especially since he literally had a conversation two days ago with Mion. Like, Mion, could you kill him for me? No, Keiichi, no. <laughs> and it's like, he died. Hmm. This is not going to go well. <laughs> if, this, if this ends with him getting arrested, that would be different, though. I saw two lights swaying slowly in front of me. A car was approaching. Oh, no. I need to get out of the way. Actually, the previous two chapters both kind of ended with Keiichi talking with Luisi. So this could, it could be the same this time, but this time Oisi's like arresting him just like, we caught you. <laughs> oh no, I need to get out of the way. From far away in the shadows of the darkness, a car appeared. Its dazzling lights washed over me. The driver made a short honk of the horn to inform me I was in the middle of the road. I have to get out of the way. I kept telling myself that, but not only was I riding one-handed, I was also exhausted and riding half-brained, so I couldn't do anything. Wobble, wobble, wobble. I meandered about, not going to the right or to the left. The driver decided to swerve out of the way right in front of me, and without lowering its speed much, steadily came towards me. Its outline grew larger in my vision, and telling myself again that I really needed to get out of the way, I jerked the handlebars in one direction, then lost my balance and fell over, bike and all. Wouldn't this be funny if it was Uisi's car? <laughs> my whole body splayed out, and one foot got caught on the bike. This was seriously bad! My drowsiness quickly vanished, and just as a cold sweat broke out from my skin, 
The driver recklessly spun the wheel to the left, made a counterclockwise U-turn, and came up right up to me and stopped. The driver's seat opened, and the driver came out. You idiot, what are you doing here? I was pretty sure someone would yell at me like that. Oh, no, I don't want you! No, <laughs> oh, not creepy, lady! It was a woman's voice, and one I knew. I lifted my face up off the ground and looked at her. Oh, no, not you! Why? Are you off to fake your own death again? Yikes. <laughs> Hi! Look at me, I'm my lucky clover! <laughs> this, this, this one is more fame. Let's go. <laughs> the moon is lovely tonight, yes. It was raining too far, far too hard to see the moon. Takano-san unfolded an umbrella and smiled as she spoke. That smile was for some reason uncanny, like she'd seen right through me. Out of all the people I could have met, I got the sudden feeling that this was the one I wanted to see the least. If I was him, I would rather run into her than the police officer. In this situation. I was seen and in the rain. She'd come here via car. She wouldn't have known what I was just doing. And yet, she smiled as though she knew everything. Calm down, Keichi Maibara. She always makes that mysterious looking smile, remember? Don't let her in on anything lest you dig your own grave. <laughs> that did happen! <laughs> yeah, he asked me to kill the uncle and is rejected. Two, calls me on asking to take Satoki, Satoko to the festival. Three, isn't at the festival and the uncle disappears. Yeah, <laughs> anybody with half a fly's brain could put it together. <laughs> I should tell a good lie here. If I could just do that, things would work out. This is where I wish they would give me a choice to pick a lie. That would make it much more interactive. Hey, that's... That's actually a good lie. Like, that's legitimately a good lie right there. Because that is something that he did. I mean, if, if she questions Ren on that, she'd be like, Um, we didn't leave a shovel behind. <laughs> also, we are covered in mud. But hey, we if we if we said we had to dig for it at the dump, that, that, no, that was smooth. Good job. Like, he's under pressure. That was good. Okay, that admittedly, that looks suspicious, especially on the night of the festival. Maybe I'm just as stupid as he is. <laughs> Fifteen hundred seconds to get arrested. <laughs> okay, you just got comment of the night right there. <laughs> Not at my house. You don't want to know how much garbage I had to look for to get this shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I, either. <laughs> Honestly, if you're not swearing like a sailor, auto mod shouldn't be removing these. Unless I have one of my mods who's secretly watching is deleting things, but I don't think that would be the case. Because <laughs> I only have two mods. <laughs> and one of them is my sister, and I don't think she's watching right now. <laughs> Never mind. Our, our, uh... Never mind, our lie was terrible. Takano-san was clearly aware that something exceedingly abnormal was happening with me. And she played her little word games. She was driving... She was enjoying driving me into a corner. Maybe she had a vague guess just from the situation of what I'd been doing. My timing really sucked to run into her of all people of all the times. At the very end, I could only be frustrated at my terrible luck. Okay, the whole the rain sound effect fading out, the fading back in is kind of getting on my nerves. <laughs> like, you couldn't have just had a better looping rain track? I'd done so much, and the end was literally right around the corner. So why, why at the very, very end did I run into her of all people? What do you do, Keiji Maibara? You're still holding something that could be a dangerous weapon. 
Will you silence Takano's son? Don't do that! <laughs> Don't do that! <laughs> Even if it would be simple to kill Takano-san, dealing if the car should come in afterward would be an issue. I couldn't drive a car. It was completely different from a motorbike. But even if the car was here, as long as there was no proof I killed her... Yes. In tonight's downpour, without any prior planning, all by coincidence, a hit and run. As long as I didn't drop any handkerchiefs with my initials on them, they would never know how I, I, that I killed her. Black flame quietly smoldered and raged in the core of my body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I-I don't like where this is going. Yikes. Wow. Yup. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Takano-san started to laugh by herself, then thankfully stopped talking about it. But the dark clouds in my mind didn't go away. If I moved, she would leave. So I tried to get the bike up and out of the way, but then I twisted my ankle in it and fell over. Yeah, good luck uh, murdering somebody with a twisted ankle. There was a sharp pain in the ankle I twisted. This is nonsense! A sprained ankle? Now? Takano san squats down and takes a good look at the ankle I keep rubbing. She's a nurse, too, so she's gonna be like, Oh, I can fix it. Get in the car. We'll go to the police station. <laughs> she compares it to my facial expression, apparently trying to gauge how bad the wound was. And by the way, where's Tomotake? Didn't you guys go to the festival together? Hmm? We should just turn around and be like, Did you kill your friend? <laughs> I didn't expect to, but I couldn't even stand up. It was all I could do to shamelessly wiggle on the ground like a caterpillar. Takano-san looked at her watch, then at her car, and then after thinking for a moment, opened the passenger seat door. Then gave me her shoulder to stand up with. I don't trust you. Nobody good has ever called themselves a nice person, but it would have been a terrible thing to say with someone holding me up like this. Why does everybody have the same car interior? This is Uisi's car, and it's also Coach's car, now it's Takano's car, too? Everybody just drives the same brand of car? <laughs> My gosh. Uh, I took Takano's hands and sat down in the passenger seat. Takano-san went around the back and looked at my bike on the ground. I could clearly tell from her face that she thought it would be a pain, since it would be heavy, and it would get her car dirty. But my bike has the name Maibara written on it. I couldn't leave it out here like this. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's actually more accurate. <laughs> I, I know they did. They just reused the CGs, obviously, because that's a lot of effort to draw a, a new car when the other one does just fine. I just, I like to nitpick. All right. <laughs> it's got uh, my passwords on. Really? What's in there? I would love to see. How about you move the stuff in the trunk to the back seat and then put the bike in the trunk? What's in the trunk, Takana? <laughs> what if she's in the middle of committing a crime too? <laughs> that would be kind of funny if two people who committed crimes like meet each other and they're both like. <laughs> Except she's not acting suspicious. She's like, <laughs> I turn to back to the back seat and see someone's folding bicycle there already. <laughs> wait, wait. She has somebody. She has somebody else's folding bicycle. <laughs> Why does she have another bicycle? <laughs> how many how many kids are you picking up tonight, Takano? <laughs> what the heck? 
Why does she have another kid's bicycle in her car? There's no way this lady has kids. No shot. She doesn't have a wedding ring. <laughs> and it's the 80s. <laughs> what the heck? I hope she actually brings us home and doesn't just take us out. <laughs> Still look big enough to fit my bike in there as well. My expression reflected in my thoughts, and the exact thoughts seemed to get through to her. Did she break? What else should, would she have in her trunk coming back from Watanagashi? Did she steal a bunch of the torture things from the shed? I'm sure she broke into the shed this time around too, right? <laughs> Takano-san continued with her mean jokes, but she hoisted my bike and loaded it into the back seat for me. Thank you. The main jokes were one thing, but she couldn't do something about that eerie smile of hers. <laughs> well, we can do something about that eerie smile of hers. We could we could turn it to, to this art style if we wanted. But honestly, again, I like this art style most of the time, but I feel like it, Takano looks way better with this one. More importantly than the bike, I really didn't want to leave the shovel here. The shovel could be directly connected to the buried body and to me. Takano-san gave me a clearly dubious expression. <laughs> I borrowed it, and I need to return it. The more I talk, the worse it gets for me. Just be like, I got it from the dump. I need it. Just, just double down! <laughs> That's how I felt, so I didn't force myself to answer her. Eventually, outlasted by my silence, Takano-san gave a short shrug and sighed. <laughs> Oh, let's hope Takano isn't going to be like, let's have a chat with your parents. That'll be make things awkward. Takano-san brought over the shovel that was lying in the middle of the road. <laughs> I clutched it like I would never let go of it again. Takano-san watched me with a puzzled look. We should have buried the shovel as well. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't call it a, a mansion. No, I live at Rena's house. Yes, of course I live at the Maya Park. <laughs> okay, okay, let's not, let's not be, let's not be an asshole. <laughs> Takano looks, looks less suspicious in the remaster art style. Yeah, but, but, sh sh <laughs> no, I'm not going to finish that. Why does everyone else go, call, why does everyone come to my house, the Maya Bara mansion? <laughs> As she spoke, Takano-san pulled her hand back and stepped on the gas. After making a skillful U-turn using the shoulder of the road, she steadily increased in speed. From the rearview mirror, that accursed place seemed to melt into the darkness. Huh? Takano-san suddenly tried to say something to me, but thoughtlessly, I didn't catch it. Looking ahead, Takano-san said the same thing once more. What? Oh, oh! I thought my heart might beat out of my chest, but I didn't let it show. She's probably just joking, but we're gonna be like, Ah, how did you know? But my lungs were squeezed tight, and I couldn't breathe. What <laughs> <笑>結構深く掘らないと野犬とかが匂いを嗅ぎつけて掘り返しちゃうこともあるのよ。<笑> Oh boy. Huge rusted bells start ringing in my head. And I buried it so deep that I could say it absolutely wouldn't be found? The answer was no. I was in such a rush to bury him and get it over with that I couldn't deny of having possibly buried it too close to the surface. No, wait, 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 that, but that's not, wait, anyway. This woman, how, how does she know? She just passed by her in her car by her coincidence. And we ran into each other by coincidence. If she'd been watching the entire thing from the trees, once I left, she came back into her car. Didn't make logical sense. So then, why? She's teasing. Kichimaibara. That's it. You need to kill her. My entire body reawakened, and I could feel my pupils dilate. I couldn't possibly beat her to death with a shovel in such a small car. Then, I would use my hands 
strangle her. But she was driving right now. If I strangled her, we might get into an accident. Then suddenly, Takano-san turned and looked at me. <laughs> yeah, she's clearly just making a... Well, is she making an off-color joke, or is she actually serious but gonna play it off as an off-color joke? Hmm... He had the power to hear the OST, exactly. For a moment, I was surprised. What was she talking about? <laughs> Lady, you're... No, I'm not even entertaining. This, I can't, I can't stand this woman. <laughs> Takano-san said, disappointed, returning her gaze ahead. I repeated the words she'd said a few times in my head, and finally realized she'd meant it off as an off-color joke. Stop reading my mind! That's the exact words I used! <laughs> I didn't know whether it was really... A joke, but I wouldn't be able to fool her, no matter how many lies I told. Right now, with her driving the car like this, I couldn't kill her. I would have an even harder time doing it when we got back to my house. That moment we met, that had been my best chance. And to have missed it so easily, it hurt. This guy is just gonna be I have to kill everybody now! After, I don't know why he, he I don't know what that accent was. <laughs> Tagano didn't say a single word after that. The car was completely buried in an almost suffocating silence. What kind of woman had I run into? With everything that happened today, I managed to pull it off, and at the very end of it all, I just had to go home and be go back to sleep. What bad luck. That actually is your uncle? <laughs> what? I am not Keiji. <laughs> Although he and, I, he and I are both uh, smart academically, not street smart. So, you know, th there are parallels. Oh my gosh, the rain loop is really driving me crazy. As my sleepiness gradually overtook me, the anxiety I felt steadily started to matter less and less. Is this alright, Keichi Maibara? You probably should not leave this woman alive. I like how it's gradually getting sm it's darker to simulate us falling asleep right now. I'm tired. I would not fall asleep in her car. You could wake up in a torture shed somewhere. She stepped on the brakes, and I jerked aside my, against my seatbelt. That woke me right up. I thought I must have fallen asleep by accident. I looked out the window, and there was a big building with faint lights on. It was really dark out, but I immediately knew it was my house. Uh, <laughs> それに、ほら、もう大丈夫です。一人で歩けますから。あらあら、さっきは痛そうな顔して、肩まで借りたのに。ひょっとして、お姉さんに甘えてみたかったから。あ、yes, yes I did. I I took advantage of you. I'm a terrible person. Bye. As Takano-san spoke, she left her car and opened up her umbrella. It's okay. We we don't have to worry about her. She's going to quote unquote die tonight anyways. And then fake her own death, and then she won't be around. Oh, she's not gonna blab blab to the police about this. <laughs> Is Umineko like another Higurashi like series? <laughs> when I finish Higurashi in 2043. Yeah, sure. We'll see. <laughs> As she spoke, she left the car and opened up her umbrella. The sound of raining failed. Fa fa <laughs> the sound of falling raindrops was fierce as always. This is going to be hard to explain to our folks. I carefully reached down and rubbed the ankle I'd twisted. There was still some pain and a little weirdness, but they weren't that bad anymore. Rather than being happy about how light the wound was, I first regretted this whole thing. If I hadn't twisted my ankle, I would have still taken the option of killing Takano-san right then and there. Oh, okay. Alright. Hiroshi and Umineko and Sikonia are part of an overarching When They Cry series. Okay. Interesting. You'll probably have children before you start Umineko. Okay, first off, I never said I would play Umineko. <laughs> Second off, if I do play it, I'll probably have kids by then. And I don't even have a girlfriend right now. <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> there probably wasn't much doubt that Takano-san was convinced I was involved in some sort of crime. If she knew about everything happening with Satoko, then she might have even guessed I'd killed somebody. Got click Takano-san opened the passenger side door for me. <laughs> I'm 
I ignored her and uh, answered by getting out of the car myself. <laughs> the rain was still pretty intense. I got my bicycle out of the back seat. I was a, a, a bit curious who the other bike belonged to, but that didn't matter right now. I let Takano son get uh, the whole umbrella over me and push my bicycle up to the front door. I can't believe Keiichi literally didn't even think to, you know, bring a backpack to store the, the take apart shovel. That would have fixed everything if he didn't have to drag the shovel around. Just be like, what are you doing out so late? Just like, uh, it's a long story. Just take me home. They wouldn't be like, shovel, eh? Mm, burying some bodies, eh? I mean, maybe, but, yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm okay. My ankle hurt so much earlier. And it still did, but it aggravated me that it hadn't been even been that bad. I was really seriously... It was just terrible luck. She's hiding something! I knew it! She definitely has a dead body in that trunk. Jiro-san? Oh, she meant Tomotake-san. I suppose she calls him by his first name. I bet his body is in her trunk. I, I bet almost anything his body is in her trunk. Right now. In which case, man, she pulled a risky move picking us up. Uh, I suppose she calls him by his first name. His full name must be Jiro Tomatake, then. Every, uh, almost everyone calls Umineko Ryo's peak story. Interesting. Okay. And then, the other bike, the folding one in the back seat, that I didn't care about at first, suddenly came to mind. Hey, excuse me, you're from Hinomizawa, right? On the day before yesterday, as I walked near the dam, half asleep, Tomotake-san had talked to me. And the bicycle he'd been riding, it was... She has his bike there! She definitely killed him and put his bike there, yes! Oh, we're gonna figure this out. Talking about Asan's eyes. I think they sharpened for a moment. Oh, dude. This is. Oh, man. I think. Are we going to discover she committed murder, too? But we're going to be like, all right, you don't rat me out. I don't rat you out. <laughs> is that what. Oh, man. That would be awesome. <laughs> hmm. She's not even the slightest bit perturbed, though. She's his body pillow and his bike there? <laughs> I don't know about that. Talking to San, her hair eloquently, flu elegantly fluttering, peers into my eyes. Nope. なら次郎さんは町に泊まっていることになるわよね。そうなんですか。まあ、そうならそうなんじゃないですか。街から雛見沢までは<笑> That's why Jiro-san was riding a bike. その自動車の自転車が私の車に積んであって、自動車は私の車に乗っていないなら… But he was in the car. おかしいじゃない… Wasn't he… Mio Takano? Jiro-san は雛見沢で自転車なしってことになっちゃうわよ。Jiro-san を放っておいて… Takano, let's, let's look in the trunk, shall we? As she spoke, Takano-san made eyes like a hawk. Unfortunately, I didn't really understand what was so odd. Oh, and the rain resumes. Takano-san is <laughs> good with Tomitake-san. You need to take a while to, to walk. That's not true. That's not true. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. 
Oh, you're giving me a logical syllogism, huh? Talking to San's roundabout way of talking was hard to comprehend, but that eeriness I could feel, that vague dreadfulness, I didn't like it at all. But the most wild and instinctive part of me war warned me not to pry. あ、そうだったんですか。うん。どうりで似てるとは。シースムーブ。ゲッチャー。今夜電話なかった。That's <笑> She is. She killed the guy, and she's on her way to make herself disappear. I stayed there, not knowing what to say. And Takano-san repeated her eerie, succinct phrase to me again. <laughs> Something cold and unpleasant crawled up my spine. I knew, because I'd killed a person with my own hands before. Before, I came to the conclusion that I only had one chance to beat this woman to death and keep her quiet, and I couldn't hesitate at all, so I could tell that she'd arrived at the exact same conclusion. My instincts warned me again. I wish I'd never met this woman. This faint sense, like a rotten smell, drifting from this woman, was no doubt the exact same sense that I was giving off right now. This very peculiar aspiration, the lack of uncertainty at taking a human's life for a purpose, one that only those who have risen above everything had. Actually, maybe I should have called it nausea. It meant, and I didn't know how to explain this very well, but Takano-san was the same as me. In other words, someone who shouldn't have been here. Someone I couldn't have let anybody know was here. Someone who nobody would have wanted to see. And now that we had, we could calmly pretend as though we never met. Yes. Which meant that, just like I wanted to have nothing else to do with her, she didn't want anything else to do with me either. And she too wanted to make it clear so we, that we never met. Both of us wished for the same fame. Our desires were the same, which meant Takano-san's suggestion was extremely practical. And that I couldn't outright refuse. あなたにとってもその方がいいでしょうから。どうしてそう思うんですか。いちいちうるさいわね。あ、ね、she's <笑> Right in front of my house, in a place most unsuited to killing. And yet, there was a frozen thirst for blood coming from both of us. <sighs> I would be killed right here, right now. Yeah, then I should have definitely beaten her as we passed each other. A damp, greasy sweat broke out of my body. That's fine. If you want me, then you can come any time. And when I made up my mind, she shook her head eloquently and turned on her heel. What was good? How? Because she was a kind person? That was it? I didn't get it. Takano-san got into her car. We didn't exchange any words of parting. I had performed a massive feat, the killing of Satoko's uncle, and yet I didn't feel any accomplishment. On the holy night of Oyashiro-sama's curse, on which the taking of another's life was allowed, on the terribly rainy night when the demons wandered, as agents of Oyashiro-sama's will. <sighs> the demons were never supposed to meet, but suddenly, they did. The demons parted ways triumphantly. There was no reason for them to fight. Both their objectives had already been accomplished. With the rain hitting me like a waterfall, my eyes met with Takano-san's through the car window. The female demon, her mouth twisted into a distorted, fearless smile. It was too late to kill her. Far too late. The first moment, 
the very first moment we saw each other had been my best chance. Imagine if he actually killed her at, when we first met, and then he looked in the trunk and saw a dead body, too. He'd be like, what the heck? Now I have to deal with three dead bodies? Or he could pin it all on her. <laughs> but then, except her own death. Oh, okay, maybe not. And now that we had parted like this, I was acutely aware of it. I should not have let her live. She beeped her horn quickly, then her car drove away in the deluge. The one woman who knew what really happened tonight disappeared into the dark. As long as she was alive, this night would never really end. <sighs> Just get into an accident, I thought to myself. In this downpour, slip on some mud or something, and fly face first into a tree, and die. That wasn't a delusion, a wild flight of fantasy. It was an earnest wish. Yes. It was a command. Die. DIE! And keep your mouth shut for eternity. Because I have no doubt you're wishing for me to die all the same. My curse upon her faded emptily as Takano-san's taillights disappeared into the utter darkness. <laughs> and then she got run over by the crazy taxi. Her car's lights were completely out of sight now. Even the sound of the engine faded into the sound of the heavy rain and was inaudible now. I too turned on my heel. To draw the curtains on this insane night. To open my front door and end it all. I began walking towards the front door. I was covered in mud and made a squishing sound with every step I took. Squish. Squish. Don't worry, Keiichi, my bara. <laughs> squish. Squish. She'll die. <laughs> squish. Squish. Her end will be as miserable as she is. I'll throw her into some flames alive and let her dance until she's burned to a crisp. That was a little dark. I'll burn her to ashes in the fires of hell itself until she's roasted as much as she deserves. So Squish. Huh? Just now. I... I hadn't taken a step. And yet... A footstep. Without emotion, I turned around. If there was a footprint that wasn't my own, then it was obvious someone else was behind me. Was somebody else there? I was sick of this! Whoever it was, I was sick of everything tonight. This time, I would kill them. I'd kill them without a second thought. I wouldn't hesitate to turn around and dig another hole. <laughs> but, fortunately, there was nobody there. I wasn't going to have to kill any more people tonight. This night, I couldn't handle any more of it. If I heard an extra footstep each time I stopped, I put it down to me just being tired. Are we literally not going to see him actually have to explain to his parents why he looks like a mess and is covered in blood and mud and has a sprained ankle and is catching a cold and why a random car dropped him off here tonight and why he borrowed a shovel and a lantern? Fire from hell, victim of the fifth year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it took 1.5 hours, but we completed her. Taking extra steps, brushed with an clinical encounter. Yay, yay, we completed the murder. I don't really feel good about that, because who the fuck committing murder was not a good idea. Fire from hell! Okay. Hey, what's up? 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 Hey, こちらは中国国の火球地サービスエリアなんですけどね。裏の山から何だかすっごい人煙が上がってるのが見えるんですよ。あんなところ誰も立ち入らないから、なんで火がついてるのかよくわかんないですけど。とにかく山火事にならない
There is a third murder. Oh, wait, or is this Takano's faked death? Because didn't... Didn't they find a burned corpse that they thought was Takano in Chapter 2, but then at the end they're like, eh, it wasn't actually her. Uh-oh. Yikes. Especially given the context of fires from hell right after Keiichi said that. That would be poetic. Victim of the fifth year. Let's go, let's go. Oh, the tag 07 is just is for the 07th mod that I installed for the game. That's it. Maybe I should make that just one tag 07th mod. This year's curse, right? So,いうことになるんですかね。毎年いろんな殺し方を見せてくれますが。did he do that again? あとは鑑識のじいさまに任せましょう。きっと何かの怪しげな薬物を検出してくれるに違いありません。お疲れ様です。お疲れ様です。あ、おいさん、小宮山さんたちが到着しました。おいさん、お疲れ様です。Oh, it's zero seven? I thought it was zero one. Oh, whoops! That was stupid. え、裏を書かれました。私はてっきり今夜知るのは北条鉄平だとばかり思ってたんですがね。仏は何者です。富武次郎。年何回か南沢に来てる趣味の写真家さんです。so this is like another constant throughout all the shows. No mark that can. どうなんでしょうね。北条卓にずっと張り付いてたのがバレて、ターゲットを変更したと。ああ。うん。ウェルウィマイピンアルベルトラブルフィーディサイドトテイルヒムバットアパレンティーディカイウィファンドゥム。